So today we're going to talk a little bit about how computers store and represent both positive and negative numbers. Um, this is a little tricky in that it's not as straightforward as an unsigned system. We have to deal with the fact that we have to split up our number space so that it can accommodate both positive and negative values. And there's no set way to do this. There are some very um, well-defined and well-accepted ways to do this, however, and those are the ways we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about a couple of ways first uh, that are not so commonly used, and then we're going to uh, talk uh, uh, in relative detail about two's complement representation, which is probably the most commonly uh, used way to store both positive and negative uh, numbers. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to start with is uh, a table here with uh, binary representation and decimal representation of our integer values. And uh, a couple of things to note about the system that we're going to be using. The system that I'm going to use for these particular examples is a 3-bit system. Now let's quickly review. Um, anytime you have n bits, you always can represent 2 to the n possible values. So we have a 3-bit system. 2 to the third is equal to 8, hence our 0 through 7 uh, possible values. And so we have our binary 3-bit system uh, and our decimal representations here as well. Uh, I use 3 bits just to keep it simple and small. Um, every time you add a bit, uh, you double the possible number of values. So with a 4-bit system, we'd have 16 possible values, and that could get uh, tedious. So we'll keep it simple with 3 bits, and we can um, illustrate all of the concepts that we need to with this particular uh, tip. So again, this is an unsigned system, i.e., we have uh, 8 possible binary values, and we have 8 uh, decimal values, all of which are unsigned, positive values. It's not real interesting uh, for what we're trying to do. We want to have a system where we can split up this binary number space uh, so that we have some of the numbers positive and some of the numbers negative. Ideally, we'd like half and half, half positive, half negative. But let's just see how we can do this. Um, I'm going to erase these values here because that's just one way to interpret these binary representations. Um, if we want to deal with signed values, in other words, some signed and some not, some positive and some not, we have to split these up into a set of positive and negative values. Let's look at the first method. The first one that I'm going to talk about is called sign and magnitude. And the way this works is we simply divide our number space in half. Half the numbers are positive and half are negative, and the positive numbers are represented by a leading zero. The negative numbers all are represented by a leading one. And so our number, our representations would look like this. Uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. That takes up all of our positive values. And then we simply use the rest for the negative representations. Uh, negative 0, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So this is a simple sign and magnitude system. Our sign is a first bit. If it's a 0, it's positive. If it's a 1, it's negative. And then the rest, the remaining bits, represent the magnitude of the number. Now, this has some drawbacks, one of which is the idea of two zeros. A negative zero, well, two zeros doesn't make a lot of intuitive sense, but a negative zero makes even less intuitive sense. And so that's sort of an ugly artifact of sine and magnitude. And we're going to see that uh, at least one more of our, our, our systems have the same artifact. That's not really a good thing. There's some other problems, too, with this uh, that cause it to present some problems when we implement this in hardware. And I'm not going to get into the details of the hardware issues that go along with how we represent negative numbers. But suffice it to say that sine of magnitude has the two zeros problem, plus it's difficult to implement in hardware. Let's look at the second mechanism. So that's not an ideal way to do it at least for our purposes. It's not an ideal way to do it. Another way we can represent negative numbers is with what's called one's complement. And all one's complement really amounts to is if we have uh, a, an original, let's see, origin, uh, uh, 
there we go, an original value uh, to get the negative of the original, we simply flip the bits. It's a very straightforward process. So let's just say for argument's sake, I have a, uh, 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 we got our zero and our one here. With one's complement, if I want to get the negative of one, well, the positive of one is zero, zero, one. The negative would be, well, I'd simply flip the bits, one, one, zero. So this, is, this would be our positive one. This would be our negative one. Okay, and so one, one, zero is right here. That would be our negative one. So if this is a two, zero, one, zero, we can flip the bits to get the negative two. One, zero, one. One, zero, one would be our negative two. Uh, three right here, negative, so that is zero, one, one, and to flip those bits would be one, zero, zero, so this would be our negative three. Notice we still have this zero, and so let's do uh, the zero real quick, give myself a little bit of room. I've got a zero represented as zero, zero, zero. To flip those bits makes it a one, 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 and again we get a negative zero. Not intuitive, kind of ugly but it's another way to represent negative numbers. And again, this is gonna have some impl uh, implementation issues in hardware. We're gonna solve both of these problems, however, with the notion of two's complement. Two's complement is really nice in that it solves these problems. So let's take a look at it. With two's complement, we have an original value, and to get the negative, we do a couple of things. Just like with, uh, with one com one's complement, we flip the bits first. We have another step then, once we flip the bits, we add one. That's it. That's all there is to two's complement. If I have an original value, if I want the negative of that value, I simply flip the bits and then I add one to it. And that would be my negative representation. Let's see how this might play out. I'll put this back up. Okay, so if I have a zero, now we've had the problem with two zeros up to this point. Let's see if we still have the same problem. If I have a zero and I want the negative of it, that, uh, I would, well, zero is represented as zero, zero, zero. If I'm taking the two's complement negative value, I would flip the bits, so that gives me a one, 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 and then add one. If I add one to this, one plus one is one, zero, one plus one is one, zero, one plus one is one, zero. Now what's interesting about this result is it's a four-bit number. We have a three-bit system, so this number is not even supported. In fact, it's a carry bit right there, and we can simply ignore it, which leaves us with zero, 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 or the same value we started with. So there is no notion of a negative zero. Two's complement works very nicely to solve the two zeros problem.